Now let's inter introduce to you the cosecant and the secant graph. Over here I have the cosecant graph. We also remember the cosecant graph, well cosecant was the reciprocal of the sine. So notice that I drew in in pink or red, depending on what color you see right there, is, is that I have our typical sine curve. The cosecant then is just the reciprocal of each of those points at any one particular point in time. Notice that we have vertical asymptotes at all the integral multiples of pi, 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, and so forth. And then the lowest points or the values of my, of my secant values do not get between negative 1 or 1 and negative 1. So on this one, on both of these, I would say, well, okay, so that's a little bit about the secant, the, the cosecant graph. The secant graph, very similar. It's the inverse, or the, sorry, the reciprocal of the cosine graph. Here we have um, vertical asymptotes at pi halves and 3 halves pi and so forth. Not at the integral half mark, at the integral pi marks, but at the half pi marks. Whew, take a breath. There's just a lot of stuff going on here, and we just need to get adjusted to that. All right, take a deep breath. What I notice is that both of these graphs are reciprocals of their other functions. Cosecant is a reciprocal of sine. Secant is a reciprocal of cosine. Therefore, if I look at the cosine graph and then I see the secant graph on top of it, I start to see a little bit of a reciprocal type of a movement. And likewise with cosecant uh, and sine over there in the first one. Um, the domain of both of these, the domain of my cosecant are all values except for the integral multiples of pi, that's where the vertical asymptotes are at. With the secant one, the domain are all values of x except for the half marks of pi. Those are where the vertical asymptotes are at. The range for both of these are all values from negative infinity to negative one and one to positive infinity which means there's no values in between there and there. So between negative one and positive one, there's no values. Um, my cosecant graph is an odd graph. It's symmetrical about the y or about the origin. My secant graph is symmetrical about the y axis. So it's an even function. Now let's look at a couple of variations to see how these graphs can change depending on what some of our value points are. And I forgot, there's one more thing I overlooked on that as well, and that is its period. The period of the, both of these, I'm gonna write in a different color because I messed up. The period on both of these are two pi. So notice that I the cycle does not begin again until I've traveled one pi or one two pi distance. Just because I have a function that holds water and a function that eliminates water or drops water, both of those are part of the same cycle, the same period. So a period for each of these is over a course of two pi.